Well, hello there. I hope you are all well. I'm hoping there's not too many hungover people this morning from perhaps the festivities of yesterday's Valentine's Day. But you do look amazing, however, so it can't be that bad, can it? So let's get straight into some meat and potatoes, as this video was spurned from a conversation that I had yesterday with somebody in the comments. Remember, I did the video, locks, 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 where we spoke about locks and the importance of them. And I think some people don't fully appreciate how important this is. But I want to extrapolate on that point. And this was the comment. So down here, this was with Positive Vibe Tech. Now, he left two comments here. The first one being someone with blood on their vans was standing in front of Dylan's door, then wiped it up. And then they said, my door in college was always locked. Your stuff in that room, including your food, your music, your weed. Do you think Joe across the hall has any problems about taking any of that stuff? And I think both of them valid points. But the vans, the vans print is very, very important. Now, what I will first of all say is, look, as it stands at the moment, with respect of Dylan Mortensen, nothing has been proven. Nothing has been proven whatsoever. She's caught some heat um, because at the end of the day, the, the, the Idaho 4 case and how it's been handled has meant that her part in all this has been in such a way that it leaves a lot of questions and leaves a lot of factors of the case open to interpretation, such as the eight-hour time delay. Now, originally, we was told there was no witnesses, and we could have handled that. If somebody said they'd simply slept through it all, then... You could handle it. You could handle it. But that's not what happened. Originally, there was no witnesses. Then we have a witness. We have seemingly some disjointed situation between Bethany Funk and Dylan Mortensen with Bethany Funk, it would appear being hidden and being protected while they allow Dylan Mortensen to stand up front and she has now become a material witness. She has said that she has seen someone. The entire timeline is based upon her interaction, seemingly, with this person clad in black with big bushy eyebrows. But people have forgotten about the van footprint. There was a latent footprint found outside Dylan Mortensen's door. Now, it was stated that it was found outside her door, and it was the only footprint that was mentioned. Now, was that put out there for any specific reason at all? We don't know, but it was put out there all the same. And the reason why this footprint, in my opinion, is so important, because it would be the placement of that footprint. Now, if somebody is coming down the stairs... Now, you would imagine that there would have been additional latent footprints showing almost a path as it goes past Dylan Mortensen's door. But then you think to yourself, but at the point where Dylan Mortensen says she sees the person clad in black, she is standing, she must be standing in her doorway with the door open in order to see them. Does that make sense? So at that point, this person can't therefore put a footprint outside her door. If this is the killer, for instance, and he or she has stepped in blood, they can't drag that through the house and go past that door if Dylan Mortensen is standing in the doorway, or they would have been a whole lot closer. Bear with me. So I've questioned this before with respect of, if it's a dark room, if it's dark and somebody opens a door, is there a disparity between the light that there was and the light that there is cast by the door? Because unless there is some sort of equilibrium between the light in that room and the light in the hallway, then someone walking towards or close to a door that is open, they would know that door was open. Does that make sense? Unless, like I say, there is an equilibrium, so with the, with the door being open, there is no difference. Like, if she has got blackout curtains, for instance, has she got blackout curtains or does she have blinds? Was there curtains even open? Was there light coming through that doorway as it opened? Did this person who was leaving leave at such a pace, such a haste, that they, they failed to even see? But then you think if they are coming back from Xana and Ethan's towards her and out, they are literally walking towards the door. So they don't necessarily need to see the person, but would they see the door open? 
but there is a footprint apparently outside her door. Now, to me, it makes more sense that Dylan Morton's never saw anybody. She never saw anybody and she never came out of her room. In fact, she potentially barricaded herself inside her room, locked the door, and this person went to the door to get into and failed to. And that changes the entire dynamic and brings further into question the eight-hour time delay because then you could definitely 100% say that Dylan Mortensen knew something was going on way before law enforcement was called. So why was there this delay? And again, I'm just spitballing because I do feel that the, there is a massive importance in the footprint outside the door. Now, again... Maybe they say it's outside the door, but they just mean it's in the open space between the rooms. But why say it was outside her door? And why say it's a latent print? Now, don't get me wrong, a latent print doesn't necessarily mean that someone has cleaned that footprint up. It doesn't mean that 100%. Now, someone can walk through a substance and that substance dissipates with each footprint but then when amino black or a similar substance is placed on it it then brings up that pattern again because it reacts with the with with the blood but again if someone cleaned up that footprint now again it would it would make more sense to me that Dylan Mortensen didn't see anything she shut the door and the person went to the door and then in order to hide the fact that they had been outside the door, it was then cleaned up. But that footprint is a massive, massive piece of the puzzle, in my opinion. I'd be interested to know what your thoughts and feelings are around this. We talked about yesterday, didn't we, the locks and locks, locks, locks. And again, I said, I don't think people fully understand the importance of that situation. You know, we've, the, with some of us who have been in college and been in situations where you've stayed there and you've been in student accommodation dorms or student housing, I kept the door shut. Everybody I knew kept the door shut and locked. You know, I kept locked, sorry, not just shut, but locked. I don't know anyone who left their their rooms unlocked. And I did say yesterday, uh, you know, the difference between the UK and America might be a completely different kettle of fish. But you have to then question, as we did yesterday, as to why Zana would choose to have her lock replaced if that wasn't a lock that was being used. Obviously, the function of that lock was important to her. And it was only important for different reason that was either they felt that there was people coming into the house who they didn't trust or they didn't trust the people who they actually lived with or they were looking for peace and quiet or people not walking in when they were in there when she was in there perhaps with ethan but then that would be argued again then on this night when she is in the room with ethan why not utilize the lock that you have had changed but like i say we know the rooms have locks and we hear that there is a a, a latent print outside one of the surviving roommate's doors. A print that may or may not have been attempted to be cleaned and was only revealed when it reacted with the chemical agent that was used to bring that footprint up. It didn't mention any other prints, just one being outside her door. But I, I, I say once again, with respect of what she claims to have seen... That, to me, does not make sense. Again, with the light, the equilibrium between the light in the room and the light in the hallway, I feel that someone walking towards that door would have seen the door open unless there was indeed equilibrium between the two areas of the house. But for there to be a print outside the door, there was someone outside the door. Now, was the footprint walking away from the door? Was it walking towards the door? Was it walking sideways on to show a path of travel past, towards, or away from? All of these things are important, but these are questions that Ann Taylor hopefully will ask. Hope she may know. You know, hopefully someone is doing something in this case that is getting to the bottom of some of the many, many questions that we have, but that is just one of them. Whose footprint was it? And what was done to the footprint and how did it get there outside the door? Let me know down below what you think and I'll catch you all in the next one.